Hello everybody, and welcome back to Orgo Knows. In today's installment, we will be discussing the gram-negative bacterium Francisella tularensis and its implications of bioterrorism. Francisella tularensis is the causative agent of tularemia, which is a zoonotic disease in the Northern Hemisphere. As an organism, it is a gram-negative coxobacillus that can be transmitted via numerous routes, including arthropod vectors, ingestion, and inhalation. Two subspecies, tularensis and holarctica, which are classified as type A and type B, most commonly cause disease in mammals. Type A is only found in North America and has two subtypes that are endemic to the eastern and western halves of the country. The organism has a wide host range, with type A more common in rabbits and hares, while type B is more often found in rodents. In order to spread throughout a host population, the organism most likely relies on ectoparasites for dissemination. Francisella tularensis also has multiple vectors, both mechanical and biological, that transmit the organism to humans and other mammals. The most important vectors are ticks, deer flies, horse flies, and mosquitoes, with only ticks suggested to be biological vectors. A biological vector is one that facilitates growth of the bacterium, rather than just being a means of dissemination. In the clinical aspect, there are numerous forms of tularemia that arise from different modes of transmission. Ulceroglandular tularemia is the most common form and stems from an arthropod bite. The disease is characterized by an ulcer at the site of the bite and enlarged lymph nodes. This form is rarely fatal, even without treatment. A similar form of the disease, glandular tularemia, can also occur, but no ulcer forms. A rare variation of ulceroglandular disease, known as oculoglandular tularemia, can form from infection originating in the conjunctiva, where ulcers will develop on the conjunctiva. Ingestion of infected foodstuffs or water will result in oropharyngeal or gastrointestinal tularemia, which is characterized by enlarged tonsils and a yellow-white pseudomembrane. An acute form called typhoidal tularemia is solely caused by the subspecies tularensis and is accompanied by septicemia and a mortality rate as high as 60%. Lastly, the most acute and harmful form of tularemia is inhalational tularemia. This form of the disease will be considered in the context of biological terrorism. For the most common form of tularemia, also a glandular tularemia, the skin lesion appears at the site of an infection three to five days after exposure. Bacteremia develops and the coxobacillus avoids lysis by complement through its protective capsule. Early lines of host defense include TNF-alpha and interferon gamma pathways. Subsequent lines of defense involve CD4, CD8, and alpha-beta T-cell receptor cells. Though some infection is eliminated via immune response, the pathogenicity of tularensis strains depends on their ability to survive within macrophages. Bacteria enter macrophages using the cytochalase and B-insensitive pathway without triggering the respiratory burst. Notably, the bacteria enter macrophages through a novel mechanism called looping phagocytosis, where the organism is internalized by a pseudopod loop. However, if any bacteria are opsonized in the blood, they can be phagocytosed by polymorphonuclear leukocytes, which can kill the bacteria by oxidative burst. The ACPA protein in Francisella tularensis with acid phosphatase function plays an important role in the inhibition of respiratory burst. Once within the macrophage, acidification of the phagosome is essential for growth in iron acquisition. There are also several proteins that are upregulated within the macrophages, but their specific functions and in intracellular survival remain elusive. After macrophage growth, the bacteria induce cell apoptosis and escape to infect other cells. Macrophage cell death can be induced as a mechanism to halt infection. Macrophage guanylate binding proteins, which act downstream of type 1 interferon receptors, facilitate this cell death. The AIM-2 inflammasome is activated, as well as caspase-1 and various interleukins. In regards to virulence factors, few have been identified. The capsule is essential for serum resistance, but is not necessary to survive within macrophages. Typically, the LPS endotoxin is an essential bacterial virulence factor. However, in Francisella tularensis, the LPS has low bioactivity and undergoes phase variation, altering the antigenicity. This variation in antigenicity affects the bacteria's ability to grow intracellularly. In order to hijack the macrophage cell, Francisella species use a type 6 secretion system that injects effector molecules across the inner and outer bacterial membrane into host targets. In this case, this is the only bacterial genus that has an internal contractile injection system, rather than one that operates in extracellular space. On the topic of biological terrorism, Francisella tularensis is listed as a priority Category A bioterrorism agent. There are numerous reasons for this placement, including the bacterium's extreme virulence and the capacity to cause severe illness or even death. 
However, of greatest concern is the remarkably low infectious dose necessary to cause infection. In humans, only 10 colony forming units are required for disease development. On top of this fact, Francisella tularensis can be easily aerosolized. Other classical bioterrorism agents, such as Bacillus anthracis, require tens of thousands of spores for infection to occur. Although the inhalational disease may not be of maximum severity, the incredibly low infectious dose certainly bridges any gaps in regards to potential agents of bioterrorism. Vaccines have been developed against the organism, but total protection has yet to be established. Alright, that is all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Farewell.